Good morning, church. So glad that you're all here today. Uh, for those of us watching online as well, we're so glad that you are tuning in with us today. So before we begin this time of praise and worship, I just want to encourage everybody with um, a scripture that, that I have always come back to whenever I'm looking for God's faithfulness in a time where uh, I don't seem to see uh, things happening around me. And this verse is taken from Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, and it says, Be strong and courageous. For you are the one who would lead these people to possess all the land uh, I swore to them, their ancestors. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be, a, be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So it, it is always something that has been very close to my heart for a lot of things that I've been through. And I just want to encourage you today, whatever that you are waiting for or whatever miracle that you're hoping for, even in this time, just remember that even if people fail you, God is always faithful. And what we're going to do today is just going to declare the name of Jesus over everything. So I want you guys, to, as we sing these songs, these, these are just songs, but as we sing the songs, this come with your heart that is open, just to glorify God, and just above all, just to put the name of Jesus above every problem. Amen? Amen. Let's start. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 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 Blessed be the name of the
And Jesus, you're alive forevermore. As we come as a family to celebrate. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for this awesome privilege that you've given us. Thank you for, for this awesome privilege that you've put us, Lord, in a church family. God, that indeed, Lord, that we can stand together, we can pray for each other. And God, we pray, Father God, that can, we can worship you together. Lord Jesus, we just want to exalt you. And God, we know, Father God, that even as we've come this morning, God, there's a tremendous anointing in this place. God, because, Lord, we're doing something that's pleasing you. And Lord Jesus, we pray, God, for a fresh anointing upon your people, each one of us. Lord, a fresh touch of your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. God, move in our midst as you have moved during the worship. Move in our midst right through. Hallelujah. God, we just want to yield ourselves to living hands. And God, even this morning, we just want to commend ourselves to you. We want to bring our nation, Malaysia, before you. Come on, let's lift Malaysia before the Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we declare over Malaysia, your kingdom come, your will be done. God, we declare over Malaysia, oh God, that indeed, Lord, that every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. We declare over Malaysia, Lord, righteousness, justice, and truth shall prevail. Lord, we declare over Malaysia, Father God, even this morning, Father God, for just the divine favor of God, divine intervention. Hallelujah. God, we do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old over Malaysia. But Lord, we know, Lord, and we perceive and know, God, that you're doing a new thing. And God, shall we not know it? You will make roads in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Do it, Lord, in Malaysia. Malaysia, Lord, needs a fresh move of God. Malaysia needs a fresh touch of God. Hallelujah. From the north to the south, east to the west. God, that indeed, Lord, for just a move of your spirit, Lord. Father God, we want to bring our nation. Lord, we bring and come against, Lord, this COVID virus. We want to bind it and curse it in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask, Father God, even this morning for help. Lord, we pray, Father God, for those that are struggling in their li- in, for their lives in the ICUs. Lord, we pray, Father God, for healing and help, Lord. And Lord, we ask, Father God, even God, even over Malaysia, that you give our leadership wisdom. And God, we want to declare over Malaysia. God, we ask, Father, come on, let's ask, Lord, wherever you are, bring our nation before the Lord. Lord, we ask, Father God, for a righteous change. Lord Jesus, you are a God that, Lord, you said ask and you will receive. You said ask in your name and you will answer. We ask, Father God, for a righteous change. Lord, we ask, Father God, for a truth change. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask, Father God, for a justice change. And God, we know, Father God, it is you, Lord, that dictates, dictates the events of our nation. And Lord, we want to commit Malaysia to living hands, bless every church. And Lord, we want to commit every family here. Lord. Come on, just take a few moments and pray for your families. Lord. Hallelujah. We bring every family. And Lord, we ask, Father God, that even today, God, for your divine favor, God, there may be family members that are not saved. Or um, family members that have walked away from the Lord, Lord Jesus, bring them back, Lord. Anyone that's backslided, let them slide back to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, we pray, Father God, even Lord, for your divine favor. God, divine favor over every family here. We pray, Father God, for God, that God, divine favor, health, God, mental health, financial health, Lord, emotional health, our physical health, and spiritual health and well-being. Lord, we declare the favor of God. And we want to commit each one of us into living hands. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Come on, everyone. Just open your mouths and declare it.
seat of three right now. I want you to put your hands together and give Jesus a mighty hand of praise. At the count of three. Hello, hello, hello. At the count of three. Look. One, two, three. Ah! Hallelujah. God bless you. Look. God bless you. Look. Hallelujah. What a joy it is that each one of you here may be seated and going to Sheila the God. Good morning, church. I right, come on, people. We're back in church. Shouldn't we be more excited about being back in church? Amen. Amen. One amen. At least I got one amen. Okay, so it's really good to see each and every one of you here today. I think uh, I've been here a few times, and you know, when you look in the front, there was not many, nobody here actually. So today, when I stand in front here and you see everybody and you see familiar faces, it's really nice to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. All right, so I want to welcome each and every one of you back again today. For those who are at home, welcome. Um, and again, don't worry if you did not manage to register in time to come to church. Uh, there's always next week, so please, the minute the link gets sent out, then make sure you register quickly, yeah? Uh, so we're not going to go and stand up and look at one, but I would just want you to turn to each other and, you know, do something, you know, saying hi. Or, it's been a while since we've seen each other, right? All right, so now we're going to go on to the next part of worship, which is going to be offering, and I'd like to call upon Auntie Shantini. Good morning, church. Uh, okay, nice to see each one of you. Jesus said in Matthew 6.21, Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Decisions that we make, the actions that we take, both large and small, reveal a person's values and what they treasure most. What do we prioritize in life? What judgments influence our choices? And where we put our investments serve as an indicator of what we really desire. In our Christian life, people make value judgments on how to spend our money. And in life, we need to take our, we need to factor in the eternal state, the eternal rewards that we get when we give to God. And when giving the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, reading from Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where both moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For where your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. So I just want to encourage you this morning. You know, even as we give unto God, it's not just a giving for now. It's for eternal reward. And God wants to bless us even as we give. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that all that we have, Lord, we give one to you. Father, all that we have comes from you. And Lord, even as we give unto you this morning, Lord, it's an indicator of our heart condition. Lord, even as we desire to put our heart for you, we pray, Lord, that we will put our treasure in that place too, O oh God, that we will give unto you, Father, for the extension of your kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. As you give this morning, there'll be ushers at the, at the exits. You know, so you can drop in your offering and your tithes, and you can also give online if you're not physically here. So the numbers are on the screen. God bless you. Okay, I just want to share with you this week's announcement. So our church team for this year is empowered to make a difference. So you can read on uh, from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, and Ephesians 4, verse 12. Uh, and so, you know, we've been going through a series of it. So that's our church team. So keep it in prayer and, and see how that team can also transform your life. Uh, prayer meeting every Thursday, 8.30 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. So we'll still do it via Zoom. So the link will be sent out in the middle of next week. So keep an eye out for it. Uh, and then you can log in as well. Uh, next week, 10 a.m., we will be having service here. Uh, and uh, it's going to be on Let Us Worship. So, for, again, the registration link will be sent out. So, for those who would like to be physically present in church, you need to register online. Uh, each and every member needs to be registered. So, please make sure you do that. Uh, or if not, then we will also be on Facebook Live. So, keep an eye out for that. All right. Thanks.
Amen. Amen. That's our theme for this, uh, for this year. And we just want to encourage each one of us uh, that God has called each one of us, all of us, to be empowered to make a difference. And so, uh, question, has the world around us changed because of us this week? No? And so, there's a question that we need to keep asking. No? And so, a few things as you take note of this whole, uh, our empowered to make a difference. Uh, it's an empowering culture that we want to create. Uh, first thing is, uh, it's the empowering of the Spirit of God. Uh, without Him, we can do nothing. Second thing is, we need to encourage one another. Remember, ministry is not uh, leadership or staff. Ministry is all of us. Uh, and we are here to equip everyone to do ministry. So, encourage one another. There's a lot of ways that we can do, uh, creative ways that we can do to encourage one another on a daily basis. Next thing is we've got to excel in serving. Always look out for opportunities to serve wherever we can uh, uh, because God's looking, for, uh, uh, God's looking for people that will serve. Then the, the fourth thing is we need to be equipped to minister. And so how are we, as, 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 you will look at the, as we will see in the message today, uh, our whole empowering and equipping comes as a result of the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And so equip yourself wherever you are See how we can be empowered with the Word. And the last thing is, you know, we can do everything else and forget the last thing. It's of no point because out there people are heading towards an eternity without Christ. And so evangelize the lost. And so I want to keep, you know, we will keep declaring this over us, all of us. We are ministers. Uh, we are ministers of God. We have a ministry. God has given each one of you gifts. Your gifts are different from mine. My gifts are different from you. Yours, you know, all of us have a purpose in the body of Christ. And, you know, and we use our gifts to glorify God. And, and you know, God has blessed us. Come on, God has blessed each one of us for us to be a blessing. And, of course, the last, last thing is, you know, we are all empowered to make a difference. And so, uh, help us, let's together do this uh, to create a culture of empowering. And, of course, uh, we want to see people's lives change now. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, this morning, we want to thank you for this privilege that you have given us to come once again. And Father, we ask, Father God, even as we lift our hearts and hands before you, Lord Jesus, empower us, equip us. Lord Jesus, we just want to be, we want to be people, Lord, that will reflect you. Lord, we want to be people, Father God, that will empower others. We want, to be a, we want to be a people that will be a blessing to others. So Jesus, we ask, God, that you just anoint us and empower us. And even this morning, God, we pray, God, for your word. God, we pray, Father God, we want to commit your word into living hands. Lord Jesus, we declare, God, it is your word that brings change. It is your word that is living and powerful. God, it is your word that you will confirm with the accompanying signs. And God, we ask, Father God, that every person here, God, that indeed, Lord, you'll give us a heart. Father God, they'll be so receptive, Father God, to what you're saying this morning. God, we pray, Father God, uh, God, that you will reposition us. God, amidst, Lord, the bombardment with all the negatives from the world, from the media. Lord Jesus, that you will, Father God, sustain us. And God, that we will be focused on you. God, your call of us, your call of us, us as a church. And God, we ask, God, that even this morning, God, that you bless this message. And God, give us hearts that will obey, ears that will hear. We thank you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen and amen, amen. Once again, such a joy to be here with you all. And of those of you that are watching online, such a joy just to be able to even uh, to celebrate Jesus together online and on site. Amen. My title of my message this morning is Empowered by His Word. Uh, we need to be empowered by His Word. There are, two thing, there, are, there are two basic things on how we are equipped and empowered. And each one of us must realize we are empowered by the Spirit of God and we are empowered by the Word of God. Come on, the Bible is the Word of God. It is infallible. It is what God has declared. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the, the, the Scriptures declare, my Word will endure forever. You know, we love Jesus. Uh, we know Jesus because of His Word. We love Jesus because of His Word. And you and I, we cannot say we love God if we do not love His Word. And everything that's taking place, our next major event that is going to take place, is not our elections. The next major elections, are the, the next major event that's going to take place in this world, that the whole world will see, is the rapture when Jesus comes to take us back to be with Him. And where is this declared? It's declared in the Word of God. Hallelujah. And this is our rule book. This is our constitution. And so God empowers us through His Word. And I want to challenge you right through this year. You know, we're going to speak about empowering with the Spirit of God. And each one of us every day, you know, every week we must uh, experience uh, the, the power, the reality of Jesus 
uh, the power and reality of the Spirit of God. And we also, even you know, every day, every week, right, we're gonna, you're going to hear messages on you know, how the Word of God, the Word of God must be real and the Word of God must empower us. A few questions that we need to ask ourselves. Do you love Jesus more uh, today than last week? You know, we need to see, right, you know, is our love for Jesus uh, growing? You know, do we delight in the Word of God? Or is it, ah, oh, you know, it's a discipline. I've got to do it. I've got to tick that box of my spiritual responsibility. You know, have we become better people over these years, over these weeks? Have we become better? You know, are we, you know, are there, you know, are there things in our life, you know, that, you know, we are struggling with? And we've been struggling with it all through our life. Or have things become worse in our spiritual life? And so these are questions that we need to ask ourselves. Has the world around you and me improved this week as a result of our existence? Why? Because if all the answers are no, each one of us, come on, we got to get back. We've got to allow God to, you know, do a, a precious work in each one of us. And we've got to yield and allow the Spirit of God just uh, to work within us. And so empowered by His Word. Come on, tell the person next to you, empowered by His Word. We are empowered by His Word. We are empowered by His Spirit. And, you know, and this is the book. This is the book that, you know, you and I base our lives upon. Hallelujah. And then I'm just going to give you a few key words as you just take, uh, as, we, as we journey through this. The Bible says this in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Come on, if you and I, you know, if you and I want to, uh, experience the Word of God. How are we going to be empowered by the Word of God? How are we going to experience uh, the Word of God in our life? In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, what does the Bible say? All Scripture. Come on. All Scripture. All Scripture. See this with me. All Scripture. All Scripture. All Scripture. I can't hear you guys. All Scripture. All Scripture. All Scripture. All Scripture. Things that you don't understand, things that you do understand things that you're confused, all Scripture, the Bible says, is given by inspiration of God. You know, that word inspiration, it means God breathed. The pneuma of God, it's inspired. Hallelujah. God used human beings to write it, but it was inspired by the Spirit of God. And the Bible goes on to say, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is, come on, profitable. It brings benefit to each one of us. You know, it is profitable, the Bible says, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It is profitable. That's why, come on church, you and I, right, we need to love the Scriptures. We need to love the Word of God. It is the main way God speaks to us. Hallelujah. And our neglect of it is the reflection of our relation, is the reflection of our distance from God, our disconnection from God now. The Bible says all, you know, the Bible says the Word of God is there for each one of us. To, uh, doctrine, that means, right, keeps us on the, uh, doctrine means what is right. What is right. Reproof means where did we go wrong? You see, the Word of God is something that will tell us where we went wrong. Correction means how we can get back to the right direction. Instruction means how we can keep on the right path, Amen. And the Bible says that's why the Word of God is profitable. Hallelujah. And then the Bible goes on to say in verse 17, what does it say? Uh, the Word of God, that the man of God, come on, the woman of God, the man of God may be equipped for every, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You want to be equipped for ministry? You want to be equipped to do the works that God wants us to do? You want to be equipped, if you want to see change in our lives, come on, the Bible says, right, the, the Word of God, uh, the Word of God, as a result, the Word of God, God's purpose for each one of us is that we may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Come on, know what God says. Know the power of the Word of God. No, come on, as you look at Scripture, we've got to know. You know, we've got to know. Why? Because if you and I do not know the power in the Word, come on, you and I will not. You and I will not focus. You and I will not take initiative to look into it. Hebrews 4, 12, the Bible says the Word of God is living and powerful. Come on, the Word is alive. Come on, as we read, you know, every day when you get into the Word, it is alive. It speaks to you. It is powerful. 
In Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible says, He sent His word to Come on. He sent His word to heal. Hallelujah. And deliver us from all oppressions. That's what the word of God does. Somewhere in the, somewhere in the uh, early 90s, you know, I think I've shared this with you, uh, you guys before. You know, I was really struggling uh, on an issue in health, in health. You know, I was really struggling. Went and saw a specialist. They did the test and they thought it was some form of cancer. But it was not cancer. But I was really sick. You know, I was really struggling. You know, head pains, chest pains, everywhere pain. You know, kept uh, kept pressing on in the things of God. You know, I was res- continued, right, my responsibilities. At the time, I was working as an engineer and continued my responsibilities in church. And, and, and But struggle, struggle, struggle. You know, one evening, you know, on a Sunday evening, uh, you know, I was sitting down just waiting and saying, God, you know, God, how am I going to go through life? You know, I'm so feeling so sick. And then I heard the voice of God saying, son, you are healed. And then I spoke to God and said, God, how can you say I'm healed when I don't feel healed? And then I realized, you know, sometimes you don't need to feel, right? You need to hear the voice of God. And I said, God, because you said it, I believe it. And during that, during that week, it was in the TNB office, six floors, working in TNB, six floor, lunchtime, everybody had gone out. And as I was reading the Word of God, come on church, as I was reading the Word of God, it was just, you know, a portion just doing my daily Bible reading. Just right, opening the Scriptures, uh, I think it was some portion of the Old Testament, and just reading it. And suddenly, and suddenly, you know, I felt something, you know, so I, I felt, you know, like something just lifted up. And that moment, I was instantaneously healed. Who says the Bible, you know, who says the Bible is not powerful? Who says the Word of God is not living? Hallelujah. It is living. Ah, uh, you know, when, you know, when God, the, the Bible says the Word of God is living and powerful. The Bible says the Word of God. Hallelujah. You know, the, the, He sent His Word to heal and to deliver us. That's why it's so important for us. Come on. I want to challenge all of us today. We've got to be empowered by the Spirit of God. And for us to be empowered, we've got to know the power in the Word of God. Isaiah 55 verse 11, the Bible says God sent His Word. And, you know, and the Word ret- did not return to God void, but it accomplished the purposes of God. Hallelujah. You see, every day when we sit down with the Word, God has, you know, God, whatever God speaks to us, God has purposed and it will come to pass. Hallelujah. And so each one of us, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. In John 8, the Bible says, God gave us the truth and the truth shall set us free. Come on, church. If you and I want to be empowered by the word, if you and I want to experience the word of God, church, listen, we need to know. We need to know what God says. We need to know the power, and each one of us, we need to live with that power. Some of you have heard this, you know, last, uh, last in September, you know, my wife went through a major surgery, in the brain surgery, look at her. I mean, she's really looking good, perfectly well, because of the goodness of God. And the word God gave me for that was Romans 8, 28. Uh, what does the Bible say? All things work together for Come on, all things work together for good. We are His kids. You and I have His word. And whatever God does, God will fulfill what He has spoken. And so we've got to know the word of God. You know, I won't be standing here this morning if not for the word of God. My life, right, my mind was so messed up before I became a Christian with all kinds of filth and nonsense. And that was the reason why I became a Christian, why I didn't have peace. You know, uncontrollable mind, caught thoughts, right? Filthy, all kinds of nonsense. But it is the Word of God that, you know, has helped me, hallelujah, to discipline the mind and to help me to just, uh, you know, to train this mind so that each one of us, that so that my mind can be focused on the things of God. Hallelujah. Can I hear an amen? amen. Come on, someone give him praise or make some noise or do something. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Know the Word. Know the Word. Know the word. You got to know the word. You got to know the word. Uh, the, the next thing that you need to do, another, uh, the second thing that we need to do is in Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Come on. Uh, Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. The Bible says this: Blessed is the man. Come on, how many of you want to be blessed? Some of you do not want to be blessed. 
How many of you want to be blessed? Hallelujah. Amen. And what does the Bible say? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But, come on, what is his delight? His delight is, to, you know, his delight is, what is his delight? His delight is to, in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates. How long does he meditate? Day and night means continuously, but at least there must be two times. Once in the day, once in the night. Hallelujah. Amen. So he meditates day and night, and the Bible goes on to say, but he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth the fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. You see, friends, you know, if you and I want to be blessed, if you and I want to be empowered by the word of God, the second thing that we need to do is we need to receive the word of God. You see, the, the distinction here is what we receive. The Bible says, but his delight. If you and I want to be blessed, if you and I want to be empowered, if you and I want to walk a life that is pleasing to him, and that's all we want in life. We are not here to please anybody else except God. And for us to see that the Bible says we need to delight ourselves in the law of the Lord. We need to delight. That means we need to enjoy the word of God. That means you and I, it is not like, oh God, you know, I've got to come and read my Bible, you know, like a religious duty. No, we've got to enjoy. Come on, you know, God, God can speak to us. We've got to enjoy. You know, when you and I begin to delight, it is no longer something that like, we are forced to do. And God wants us to delight. And God also wants us to meditate on the word of God. You see what? We need to receive the word of God. We need to know the word of God. And we need to receive the word of God. And each one of us, come on, each one of us, our duty in our Christian life, our responsibility, our priority. All of us here, you know, a lot of times we are driven by our preferences. If I feel like doing it, I will do it. Come on, it is not about preferences. You know, it is about priorities. And our, it is not about preferences. It is about the promises of God and the presence of God. Hallelujah. Put aside our preferences. Put aside right whether God, you know, I will do it if I feel like doing. Come on, it's not about feeling. Yes, it, and you know, it's about each one of us putting aside our preferences and you know, making it a priority for us to delight ourselves in the law of the Lord and meditate upon the law of the Lord. Church, that's all we have in life. You know, why is it that, you know, as I said earlier, why is it that, you know, a lot of times we do not change? Why is it that, you know, so many times we are struggling with our minds? You know, yesterday as I was driving back uh, and after work, uh, the office, you know, just driving back. And I was just thinking in my head, you know, how wonderful it would have been if maybe when I became a Christian, I knew the same principles that I know now. It would have really, right, helped me, you know, un you know, it would have helped me, you know, the, you know, all the time of, you know, nonsense thoughts and over these years, you know, over imagination of small things. If I'd only realized the principles that I'm sharing with you now, how much more life would have been and more joyful life would have been. You see, one of the, one of the you know, the signs of a Christian that's walking with God is joyfulness. And each one of us, it's a sign that each one of us must understand. If we, have lost the, if we have lost our joy, then we need to begin to ask God and say, God, I need to restore this. Why? Because joy is an indicator of our spiritual condition. The Bible says His delight is in the law of the Lord. That means that there is a decision that I need to make. Of course, there's also a warning there. In verse 1, the Bible says, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. That means what God is saying is there are things that you need, we need to do if you and I want to be empowered by the word of God and there are things that we shouldn't do. There are things that we should receive. The word of God is counsel and it is our priority. It is where God speaks to us. Everything that we know about God is here. But the ungodly have counsel as well. Because, and the Bible calls it, 
wrong counsel, bad counsel, ungodly counsel. And so, we, you and I, we need to be careful that we are receiving, come on, from the Word of God. And you and I need to be careful that we are in our associations or, you know, where we are getting our negative stuff from. You see, if you and I receive, listen to me, if you and I receive what God wants us to receive, come on, tell the person next to you, you will achieve. Okay, so if you and I receive what God tells us to receive, we will achieve. But if you and I receive what God tells us not to receive, we will be deceived. You know, and so it is a choice that we need to make. And the Bible says, as we take delight in the law of the Lord, as we meditate on the law of the Lord, that means meditate, you know, it means an inward chewing, an inward digestion, amen, an inward, our minds are focused on the Word of God. No. Come on. You know, it is the Word of God, right, that will bring victory. No. It is the Word of God that will bring victory over your finances. It is the Word of God, right, that will bring wholeness in your family. It is the Word of God. Let's be people of the book and stand in the book. The devil will use every means possible to distract us from the Word. No. You know, sometimes when you're reading your, you're reading your Bible, or, you know, when you're just reading in your handphone, you know, you know, there'll be so many kinds of thoughts that will come and distractions. You just got to tell those thoughts, stop it. Hallelujah. Why? Because this is priority and we need to position ourselves. Even though we need to, you know, we need to give ourselves, we just need to position ourselves to prioritize our time with God. And I remember many years ago, there was an Indian preacher. I heard a message from an Indian preacher. And he was just sharing an illustration of someone that he knew. There was this girl in India, she had come up to a marriageable age. And, 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 and so the, the parents were trying to match make her with somebody else. And so she was a godly girl. You know, she was a, god, a girl that just loved God. And of course, right, you know, it's hard to find. You know, and so she was very particular about, you know, who, uh, who the matchmaker was. And so, you know, one day, right, you know, the, the parents told her, you know, listen, we have got... Uh, this uh, guy that's really uh, good, he's committed Christian, uh, would you like to meet him? She said, sure. And so when she met him, girl meets boy. And, you know, and, and family, you know, it's a matchmaker. And, you know, and this girl looks at the boy. What's the first question she asks him? Talk to me. What's that? She looks at this prospective man and she looks at him and she tells him, show me your Bible. And the guy, the Indian movie star, takes out his Bible like all, and then shows her a Bible and the Bible is all torn and, you know, well used. And she looks at him eyeball to eyeball and she says to him, you are my man. The word of God. Come on. The word of God for our families. The word of God for our ministries. The word of God for our church. The word of God. Come on. God speaks to you. God speaks to us. God speaks, right, for our everyday life. God, God has got specific words. God has got specific ways He can minister to our specific needs uh, for our specific time. Why? Because this is the word of God. And we need to receive the Word of God, each one of us. Come on, uh, our priority in life is for us uh, to receive the word, word of God. So read, like, enjoy the Word of God. Ask God to speak to each one of us. In Proverbs 4, verses 20 to 22, what does the Bible say? Like? The Bible says this, My son, give attention to my words. Incline, incline your ears to my sayings. Do not depart, let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. You know, what does the Bible say? The Bible, it's an instruction, an uh, instruction God gives to each one of us that we need to pay attention. You and I are so paying attention to everything else, so distracted. Come on, God wants us to pay attention. God wants us to focus on His Word. Hallelujah. God wants us, even this morning, come on, keep our ears. We need to listen to what God is saying. 
in his word. God speaks through his word. And if, you, if we ignore the word of God, what happens? We shut off the communication between God and us. The Bible says, not let them not depart from your eyes. We got to focus our eyes. We got to keep our eyes on the word. We got to see. And the Bible says, we got to keep them in the midst of our heart. Psalm 119 verse 11. The Bible says, I've laid thy word in my heart that I will not sin against you. Sin will keep us from the word and the word will keep us from sin. And so we've got, and the Bible goes on to say in verse 22, for their life to those who find them. Come on, how many of you want life? You know, maximum life. It comes through each one of us feeding, uh, feeding and receiving the word. And the Bible says health to all the flesh. And when the Bible says health, it means health. You know, it's okay, right? You know, you can eat your, you know, you can have your, do your exercises well. You know, it's important to exercise well. It's okay, right? You can eat your supplements. You can eat all, all your healthy food or whatever you want to do. But please, your priority for good health is the Word of God. Amen. Each one of us, and, 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 and as you and I meditate, and, and as you and I feed on the Word of God, the Bible says as a result of this, there will be good health flowing Amen. So do whatever you want to do that you know, but this is our priority, the Word of God. You see, the devil will use every means possible to hinder the Word in our life. Right? In the parable of the sower, what do we see? You know, in, in, in Luke 8, the, Jesus said the, the, the seed is the Word of God. And the devil, in the parable of the sower, you know, the devil will do everything to take the Word away, the wayside. You know, the devil will use temptation that stony ground, you know, use temptation to get people distracted. The devil will use all kinds of, uh, you know, in, in the, the, all kinds of cares and pleasures of life uh, to distract us. But you see, you and I need to be good ground. And you and I, even this morning, we need to receive the word and allow God to fulfill what he has called us for. Can I hear an amen? So you got to know the word. you got to receive the word. The third thing that we need to do is we need to believe the word. In Romans chapter 4, verses 20 and 21, the Bible says this, He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what He had promised, He was also able to perform. You know, in verses 19 to 21, two things. You see, the Bible, you, you and I, we can know the word, the power of the word, we can receive the word. But you see, if there's no faith acting upon the word, you know, the word, you know, the word, you know, everything that God does must be through faith. And here, Abraham, you know, the Bible says in verse 19, come on, he was 100 years old. His, was, his body was as good as dead. You know, Sarah was 90 years old. Her body was as good as dead. But he hang on to what the Lord said. And, you know, the Bible says, you know, he was fully convinced that what God had spoken, God would bring it to pass. You know, sometimes in life, all we have is the promises of God. That's why Hudson Taylor, you know, during a very difficult moment of his life, wrote to his wife and he said this, I have only 25 cents and the promises of God. I have only 25 cents, but I have the promises of God. And because I have the promises of God, come on, you know, everything will flow. You know, yes, we may not understand a lot of things, but we have the word of God. We have the promises of God. You know, they say there's over 3,000 promises. Each one of us, you know, for all of us, 3,000 promises. And God's, you know, God's provision flows through His promise. You know, for every problem, there is a word, there's a promise for each one of us. You know, God's provision flows through His promise. His promise, you know, the word of God brings His presence. And each one of us must, or we, each one of us, we must begin to believe. Hallelujah. You know, here you have the word with all the promises. And if we don't receive, we are neglecting the word. Hallelujah. We are not experiencing what the word was set for. And we need to believe, each one of us. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the Bible says, right, you know, Abraham, what is it? He was fully convinced that what God had promised God was able to fulfill. Don't allow your impossibility, hallelujah, to hinder the promises of God. Don't, uh, the Bible says, don't allow doubt or worry or unbelief to hinder what God has spoken. If God has spoken, God has spoken, hallelujah, and God will bring it to pass. And we need to believe, each one of us. You know, Jesus, you know, remember Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, what did Jesus say? 
at in the God in the you know in the wilderness. What did Jesus say as he was forty days fasting and praying, and then the devil tempted him in Matthew chapter four verse four. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, "Man shall not live by man shall not live by man shall not live by man shall not live by bread alone." It's a miracle that this bread is still in my jacket. Because there's one thing that I enjoy is bread. Not some of the sophisticated bread that you guys eat. Just simple bread. If I'm fasting, this is uh, what I will miss, the bread. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You and I, you see, why did Jesus use bread alone? You know, Jesus used bread alone. Why? Because for us to, you know, if you and I don't eat, what happens now? We will starve. And you know, and you know, and we, I mean, we starve and you, we will die. But for us like to enjoy, if it's bread, we need to eat the bread. And you and I, we need to eat the word. And we need to feed the word. Hallelujah. You know, some of us, right, you know, are physically so, you know, we, are, we eat so well. And you know, and, and some of us, you know, and, and you know, some of us, you know, other countries, right, they've got no food and they die of starvation. And yet, you know, in the same principle, you know, the word is like the bread. Each one of us, we need to feed on the word. If not, what happens? You and I will suffer from spiritual starvation. And so we've got to eat the word. You've got to believe the word. You've got to, even this morning, you've got to know the word. You've got to receive the word. You've got to believe the word. And, and the last thing, you've got to do the word. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, what does the Bible say? This book of the law shall not depart from your... Come on, how many of us this morning speak the word? You know, look at your circumstances. You know, you're going through a problem. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. You know, look at your finances. You know, by the way, you know, a lot of you have asked me, Pastor, you know, how's the church financially? You know, I just want to say this. You know, God has been so good to us. Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all my need according to His riches as a family. And, you know, and I want to really appreciate all of you, all those of you that are watching for your generous giving of your offerings and tithes. Hallelujah. Why? Because, you know, when you and I do what God wants us to do, God will provide. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, sorry, this book of the law shall not depart from our mouth. Speak the word, but you and I shall meditate on it day and night that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall be successful. You see, we've got to do the word. You know, as, as I was looking at this message, you know, as I was preparing for this message about one half weeks ago, you know, I just want to say this. One of my most favorite characters in the Bible, apart from Joshua, I mean, apart from Jesus. By the way, our most favorite Bible character is? Jesus. Come on, say it louder. So that our most favorite Bible character is? Jesus. Okay, that's uh, but you know, uh, for you know the other Bible characters, so Joshua. But one of my another favorite character is Elijah, the guy, prophet of fire. Every time you know something happens, he calls for, and he calls for fire. He did great signs. But one of the things I noticed in Elijah's life was this. You know, in, in one Kings seventeen verse one, he goes to Ahab, and for him to go to Ahab and say, "Hey, hi Ahab, there's going to be a major drought. He must have already heard." The voice of God. But in 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 2, you know what the Bible says? And the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, go to Brook Sherith. And there, you know, in the brook, I will cause the ravens to come and feed you. Elijah looks, at, looks to God and says, yes, sir. And the Bible says he did according to what God had spoken. Goes to Brook for Sherith. And come on, he found the crows and ravens feeding him. Immediately after the brook was dried, the word, the Bible says, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, and the word said to him, now go to Zarephath, and there is a poor widow there that's going to provide for you. Hmm, should I obey this or not? You know, but you know, as, as, the, as, you know, as you look at Elijah's life, the Bible says he obeyed, and he did what God wanted him to do, and a poor widow, having her last meal, her last supper, and, you know, it was sharing, and as a result, that a miracle uh, was done. And then in 1 Kings chapter 17, 18, 19, 1 Kings chapter 18, he has the word of the Lord, go and tell Ahab. The word of the Lord came to Elijah and said, go and tell Ahab, 
the rain is going to come. Wow, God, you know, Ahab is going to kill me. And then, you know, he goes and tells. And then at Carmel, as he challenges the prophets of Baal, you know, he, you know, the prophets are there. And then the Bible says this as he prays to God, God, I'm doing what your word has told me to do. And then fire comes down, you know, uh, burns up the, the altar, and you know, there's a great victory. And then now he's down, discouraged. Jezebel wants to kill him. And the Bible says the word of the Lord came to him. You see, friends, you've got to do the word. Hallelujah. You and I will go through difficult times or whatever times, but we've got to do the word. Get the worship team out. And so what are a few things this morning? Hello? Talk to me. What are the few things this morning? You got to know the word. Come on. Know the word. Know the word. Know the power of the word. You got to, even this morning, you got to receive the word. Delight yourself in the word. You know, sometimes I picture, you know, morning, having my devotion, I should be like running down the staircase and then saying, God, you know, I want to be with you. It's not that way, but, you know, Pray that all of us will have that kind of relationship. We need to delight in the Word. We need to meditate upon the Word. Hallelujah. And we need to believe. Amen. If you and I, you know, we have 3,000 promises here. And if you and I don't act on it, it is of no use. It is as if it was not there. Because we have not appropriated the promise of our life. Come on, stand up with me. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you for this uh, morning. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, we're just going to ask, I want to ask you, right, as we sing this, you know, as you look at Scripture, the Word, you know, if there's one person that's from Genesis to Exodus, uh, Genesis to Revelation, his name is Jesus. So this whole theme of Jesus, we want to praise the name of Jesus. And as we do this, I want even this morning, you know, each one of us to, you know, come before the Lord and say, Lord, I just want to delight in the Word. Can we do that? Hello, talk to me. Those of you that are watching, you know, uh, delight ourselves. Meditate upon the thought. What's in our minds? Make a decision. Make a decision. Hallelujah. This is the book. How can we neglect the Word of God? That means that we are cutting off our relationship with Him. That means He can't speak to us. Hallelujah. How can we see breakthroughs in our life? You know, some of you, come on, listen to me. Some of you, uh, some of us this morning, you know, you need to see some financial breakthroughs. Get all the financial promises and claim it and, and, you know, and God will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Come on, lifting holy hands right now and just talking to Him for a moment wherever you are. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. To Calvary Jesus' blood died for me I see his hands his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down laid him down in Joseph's tomb
exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you. 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 Worship you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, every hand lifted up this morning. Wherever you are, Jesus is the living word. The scriptures are the written word. Hallelujah. We express our love for Jesus. Our love for Jesus is shown in our prayer life. Our love for Jesus is also shown in our love for the word. And I want you, even this morning, Come on, all of us need to do something about our word life. Hallelujah. And you know, can we even this morning ask God to, you know, create such a delight in the word. Hallelujah. You know, create such a delight. You know, let, you know, scriptures like Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 be so real. Hallelujah. Even as we meditate, even as we confess and obey, that we will see even this morning the success and prosperity of God over our life. Hallelujah. Simple things. You see, simple things. You know, so many times we are focusing on the success and the prosperity. And God says, kids, come on children, listen to me. All you need to do is you need to confess, you need to meditate, and you need to confess and obey. And when you and I meditate, confess and obey, the result is success and prosperity. Automatically. Why? Because heaven and earth can pass away, but my words will not pass away. Hallelujah. Why? Because God, whatever God says, God will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Can we do that? Lifting holy hands and just telling the Lord, Lord, you know, God, give me a fresh thirst, a fresh delight. Hallelujah. Father, even this morning, God, for some of us, maybe right that 15 minutes a day. Hallelujah. For some of us that have spent a bit more than more. Hallelujah. And Lord, every time that we read your scripture, Lord, we pray, Father God, indeed, Lord, that it will be a delight. God, that you will speak to us. God, that it will bring change. Lord, we pray, Father God, the word will be so real to each one of us. And God, even this morning, God, we pray, Father God, and empowering with the word. Come on, an empowering Holy Spirit, a divine enablement. Hallelujah. For the, with the word of God, we thank you. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And all of God's people, put their hands together and give Jesus praise. Lord. God bless you. Lord. God bless you, those of you online on site man. hallelujah you know we always here for you do connect the office is open come and see us anytime the office so god bless you have a great week in jesus name amen and amen hallelujah god bless